Hi, Dan Johnson here. We are at Sun and Fun 2012 and we're back down in Paradise City and we're getting to talk to James Weeby of V-Light Aircraft. And we're standing in front of what some people have dubbed the Wonder Bread Airplane. Kind of obvious if you've ever seen TV, most people have. But it's actually a nice new product for you, isn't it, James? Yes, it is. You've got some new features about this you'd like to tell us about. Uh, this particular aircraft is loaded with features. What we wanted to do was to demonstrate in Part 103 that we could do all of the aerodynamic and feature-rich things that make an airplane really perform well and, and even perform more safely. So we did, starting with uh, like what? aerodynamics. Okay. Uh, I see spared struts here. Is that yep. part of it? Yep. They were not on the one I remember seeing before. No. We've done this on two planes now now and uh, we did a good job of it here. We did a little bit of math. The old lift struts gave 20 pounds of drag and this reduces it to less than three pounds in really? flight. Huge difference. Ah, that's a pretty big saving yeah. in just one area. Yeah. But that's not all. No, no, there's a lot more. So what's some more stuff? We uh, went ahead and covered the uh, landing gear. We've done that before, but of course we also fared them as yeah, well. Yeah, I see it comes down to a taper here yep. and encompasses your brake line. And the uh, you can't see it, but we did the same thing underneath here on the landing gear okay. support arm. Okay. So that's fared as well. We did a lot of work on the rear fuselage. Uh, this was just done as a one-off demonstrator, but uh, anyone who's building our plane can do this as well. What we did was we ran longerons all the way back the uh, okay. rear of the fuselage. It's got all the yeah, crack structures Yeah, I can see some uh, slight indent error. error ex ex uh, and we get a couple of benefits. One is, is the rear fuselage is a little more slippery, and the second is it looks a lot more like a classic Cub, especially uh -huh. when you see it in the profile from the side. It's just beautiful, nice profile. Then there's more back there. The uh, Horizontal stabilizer is now a, a true aerodynamic uh, Yeah, I airfoil. see some curve to the top of you it. That's it. what you're referring to. Classically, you know, tube and rag uh, airplanes are built from steel covered with fabric. But and they're we, just flat yeah, on top. Yeah, they're flat. So we wanted to see what would happen if we put a little bit of aerodynamic technology into the problem. So have you got a, you've got yeah. a little rib in there then that's holding yeah. that? Yeah, it's or a, a series of them perhaps. It's a series of ribs. Are they foam ribs kind of thing? Uh, those are using birch plywood. Ah, okay. We could do it out of aluminum as well, but we're using birch plywood. I know you got to keep it light that yeah. far back. So but we use a combination of 2024 T3 aluminum and chromoly okay. steel and the uh, wood and it all works together. It's like uh, it's like uh, uh, just a, a miniature wing is what it amounts sure, to. Sure, and that makes it work more efficiently, lets the yes, angle by it less more drag. Easily. It's pretty easy to demonstrate. The coefficient of lift is up to about one and a half. A flat panel is about one, so you get 50% more lift given input or less drag. You can fly faster. Just by doing that, you can get a better elevator response. Quicker, crisper, smoother. You well, feel excellent. it in the air. Now, uh, some people know that James Weeby's background is in a technology field, literally the tech field itself with computer equipment and so forth. Did pretty well in that game and obviously you throw out numbers like 2024 T3 aluminum, there are a lot of people that are watching our videos yeah. that know what that stuff is. It's not commonly used because it's a little more expensive yes. and uh, in some cases maybe a little harder to work with, a little more brittle and so forth, but it saves weight. Yes. And so you've strived for a long time with your whole series of airplanes that you've had to keep the weight down very low and this one does meet part 103? Absolutely. It does meet part 103. And I'm seeing brakes on it, which we Hydraulic. used to say, oh, you can't make a fixed wing airplane 254 pounds with brakes and, and people name all the stuff you can't have. But Like electric start. But you've got it. And no. you have electric start? We do. We have electric start. We've got a full panel. We've got brakes. We've got all the fairings. We've got all the covering. We've got the decals. We've got around 25 to 30 pounds worth of goodies above and beyond the basic airframe. And still meeting 254. Up. But well, there's a there's there's a catch there. Yes, the I limit see it back there. It's so. the parachute, right. which raises up to 278. Yes. So this plane sitting here uh, is uh, it does meet part 103. It's about a 275 pound airplane. Beautiful. It's Three so. pounds to spare, but with all that cool stuff, electric yeah. brakes, parachute, and so on. Folding and wings. Folding wings. And That's folding standard. wings which a lot of people really love, whether they really pull the wings or not, it seems to be something that draws people's attention. It sells airplanes. Now, what engine are we using on the front of this one, James? We've got a number of choices of engine, but I had a point to make here. And okay. that is, is that uh, you don't have to throw horsepower at airplanes to solve problems. In fact, by staying light, we were able to use a 28 horsepower single cylinder hearth. And I'm making a point, which is that 28 horsepower, if you have a good airplane, you can have fantastic performance in the plane. So we're using a stock F33 from our friends at Hearth. Uh, 
and uh, the takeoff acceleration is just it's breathtaking how quickly it breaks ground and how steeply it can climb well, a out. function of the weight of the aircraft as you yes. said and the smoothness and the of the smoothness. aircraft once you get and off then the a ground, peppy little engine and the f-33 has been around a long time i don't know how long but many many years yeah. of experience with this engine so this is not some untried and possibly yeah. untrue device it's a belt driven engine but we can clearly see cogs down here this is the electric starter is it not yep there's our electric starter coming so you've in. got battery in it as well uh, the battery's in there we can remove the battery it's on a quick release clip there's the starter motor right over there right uh, starter relay and all that you know all that stuff is inside there well, if it's a part 103, that means it holds five gallons of fuel and yes. no more. And so how long does five gallons of fuel last in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, hours duration with this engine? Two hours to dry tank. Two hours to dry tank. So, and you're cruising at what kind of speed at typical cruise speeds? With the way we've cleaned this up, you're cruising at 60 miles an hour. Okay, the limit so is 55 knots, 62, 62 and a half. So let's just say then uh, an hour and a half leaving you 30 minutes of fuel yep. in the tank so you don't go dry. Uh, that's uh, right at 100 miles. Yeah, that's uh, what we've said. You so can that, go 80 to 100 miles in our airplanes. So that'll get you around to that, uh, well, it won't be a $100 hamburger, I guess. Well, it'll be like a, uh, it might even be a McDonald's priced <laughs> hamburger. You never right, know. So we're looking at a part 103 airplane here. It is available as a kit. Uh, and what kind of materials is the kit builder going to be working with on the airplane, James? Sure. Uh, it's all conventional materials, nothing exotic. There's a couple of routes to go. Uh, this one is built with standard chrome alloy steel, fully welded. You can also do it with aluminum, and you end up with uh, the same basic aerodynamic airplane You're saying way. the fuselage can be built with aluminum or steel? Yeah, yeah we've got okay. one in the back there that's built out of aluminum. Okay, right behind us there. And yep. this one's built out of steel. Uh, the wings are built... And, and is this a choice of the builder then? Yeah, Which way he wants just, to go? you know, price option, build time kinds of issues. Okay. Uh, decisions that they want to make to make it right for them. Well, speaking of that then, James, a typical fellow says, okay, I like it, it's a kit. How many hours are we talking about to build the kit? Now, I realize that's one of those, depends on your experience, depends on which sure. of those options you just mentioned, but just give it a ballpark average for what somebody might typically take to build one of these airplanes. I've always been bugged by that question because everybody lies, right? <laughs> so my answer is, truthfully, 500 hours. You can do a really good job in 500 hours. Does that include paint? That includes paint okay. and covering. So it's oftentimes a number of thing yeah. they leave out is the paint. And paint can be pretty complicated, yeah. especially yeah. if you're going to put Wonder Bread dots all over it. Yeah. First, you got to design them. That takes a degree in uh, advanced technologies, I guess. <laughs> Just kidding about that. You can paint it any way you want, but you got to paint it carefully. 500 hours build time, then, that's a very realistic number. Yeah, that's Would that be number. for the steel or the aluminum Either version? Way. Or does one have an advantage in terms of the speed of building? Not really. It's the same Just different times. techniques. Uh, the aluminum, you got to rivet the rear aluminum together. You can do that in 10 hours. Okay. It's just not so that's a big not deal. that big a deal. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, 500 hours of build time, that's, uh, well, maybe a summer stretching into fall. Yeah, and you know, for some guys, that's going to be a weekend project over a year. Uh, for other guys, they're going to stretch it out. I've got one builder who's been going on a couple of years. We've got another one we shipped a kit to earlier this year that's just, you know, chomping at the bit to keep <laughs> things moving along. Just depends on their speed. Sure, it's and a mood. personality thing, but yep. uh, one thing I have discovered, and you can confirm this or change my mind on it, perhaps, is that typically when a home builder builds an airplane, especially the one that's willing to stretch it out, will do a job that you can't ever afford to do at the factory. That is correct. That's kind of what we were demonstrating with this plane right here. Uh, this plane here has got everything on it, a lot of time, a lot of uh, materials invested in making it just so. And, uh, you know, if you want to buy this plane for me, it, this, this one, for me to get the money back, for me to get the time back, pretty expensive. But you can reproduce this as a builder for about 25% of the cost of what I have to ask for the same thing from the factory. Is that right? Yeah. Well, and, and then in addition, one thing I've heard from many, many builders is even the ones that started out hesitantly going, boy, I've never done this before, I'm not sure at all. They get support from the factory on doing this, but when they get done, there's a satisfaction there from knowing every single part on this airplane. You can't ever take that away from a home builder. Yeah, It's a absolutely. really great thing. So if one wants to buy this, how do they go about that? Do you factory direct? Do you have dealers? How does that work? Uh, both. Uh, we've got a couple dealers, and uh, we also have factory direct. Just give us a call, and we'll work with you to make sure that we're doing it the right way for you. Um, we also have... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of our stuff you can buy in sub kits. So, okay. you know, you don't have to buy the whole thing all at once. You can get going a piece at a time. 
Uh, that's something that some people have done. They Especially got for a first time head. builder, get a yeah. little experience with a part of it. Yeah, you bet. See if it's, Make sure see if it's, it's really right for them. For you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you bet. But since it's a part 103, if they say, hey, you know what, over my head or gee, I don't even want to start, you can fully build it for them. Yeah, we can. And if somebody said, well, I want what I don't want to build it, I just want one, how long would you take to deliver, let's say, this airplane for them? Uh, we build from order to delivery in about 90 days. 90 days, okay. Not so too bad. say yes today, three months from now. Yep. You can hear your airplane. thing pulling in your driveway. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We're, uh, we've, we've covered a lot of information, and there's a bunch on this, but there's a lot more that you've got to tell people. Where do they go to look on the web to find out even more and to contact you? That's easy. Go to our website, Belite, B E L I T E, BelightAircraft.com. Just like a part 103, Belight. There, yeah. there you go. And uh, have you flown this airplane yet, Dad? I have not yet flown this airplane. It's something we're going to solve pretty soon, and when I do, but other information. On you, Dan. <laughs> That's right, especially me, a 103 guy. I love 103. So, But I do have news about what's going on because uh, James and Kathy Weeby put out a lot of information about what they're doing. That's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.